Hello there, this is Paul. You can call me the Mystic Guy, but I'll go by either name if you like. And thank you for tuning into this video. It's a bit of a long time coming, this one. You are looking at the desktop of a Raspberry Pi. This is the, um, the later version of the Raspberry and operating system called Pixel, which I just happened to discover the other day. So I've installed it on a Raspberry Pi, and the, the model that I'm using is a B+. So it's not the latest Pi 3, but it's the next step down, if you follow my drift. And I just wanted to show you, before I got started with Mystic stuff, how I'm doing this. So I'm running VNC to remote into the desktop, and the nice thing about this version of Pixel, the operating system, is in here under Preferences, Raspberry Pi con uh, Configuration, when you run this, it uh, comes up with this, this screen here, and you want to click on Interfaces and select Enable for VNC. When you reboot your VNC um, side of things, uh, sorry, well once you've enabled that, you click OK and you reboot the Pi, and then when you've done that, um, you'll find that, if not before, this uh, VNC icon on the top right hand corner of your screen, the server will fire up. Then it's just a case of having a VNC client that you can uh, point this to and uh, connect to the desktop and away we go. So here we are. So look, I'm not a Linux guru by any stretch of the, the imagination. I'm actually more of a, um, a Windows boy by trade, but I'm learning. And I think it's really good that we both discover stuff about Raspberry Pi and Mystic together because it is such a useful piece of hardware and um, well suited to running Mystic. So to start with, we need to go into the mysticbbs.com website, and I'm just using the built-in browser that comes with this operating system, which looks like Chrome, or a version of. And on here you go into Downloads, and I always suggest you go with the latest alpha version. It really is better and far more uh, bleeding edge than going with this much older so-called stable version. But there's so many more features in the alpha, and even the author considers it to be the most stable version. So we want this one here, ARM, HF, V6, Linux, Raspberry Pi, Android, etc. So I'll click on that, and that's going to download, and because the screen resolution is a bit Mickey Mouse, I have to sort of move up and down the screen here like that, but you can see that it's created the, um, the zip file, and if I show this in the folder, we are sitting in Pi Downloads, and I have this file here called um, Mist 112 Alpha 31, which is what was available at the time of the recording of this video. So what I'm going to do is just right click on that and say um, extract here. So it's just going to unzip those files. And while we're here, we might as well click on this one here, unix install.txt. I'll just change the view. We'll make it, I don't know about you, but I quite like the, the detailed view. It's easier to sort of get my heads around. And the other thing I'm just going to do is show permissions. Uh, as well as the owner. So I think that's all I can do. Show location, show extension. Oh, might as well turn it all on. So you can see where things are. So um, if we open up the Unix install file, first thing it says is that there's some new stuff that talks about Mystic 1.2 and the fact that it now supports UTF-8, which is a, and don't ask me all the ins and outs of this, but it's an, apparently it's a friendlier format that um, certainly Linux systems um, use. You, see, you can tell I'm not a Linux boy, I really don't know. <laughs> I should just be quiet, shouldn't I? Anyway, UTF-8, it's like a character set, I think, or a font set of some sort, but with this UTF-8 you can certainly uh, view things in a native way. Say if you log in through a terminal, uh, SSH into this machine. If you have it set to UTF-8 for local logins, um, it looks beautiful. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. And then it talks about how you can set this up for OS X and the installation. Now I just want to draw your attention to the installation notes because in here, if we were to install Mystic into um, the Pi uh, folder, so that's the home user folder, home Pi, that's fine, we could create a Mystic directory and install the software there and it's all good. 
Um, but if you're a bit like me and you quite like it as a root folder here, so it would be one of these ones and we create Mystic here. The install text talks about how you can make a directory called Mystic and then change the ownership of it to um, the correct username and group. The version that I'm playing with at the moment for the installer won't allow you to install into a directory that already exists. So in other words, this bit here, if we follow these steps, it's going to cause problems for us. So what we should be doing, and I am going to go with the process of putting it in its own directory off the root directory. So I'll fire up a terminal prompt and we'll make move that up here. Make it a bit bigger. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to do what? I will change directory to root and ls-l displays all those directories there. Now, um, I don't know why I did that because there's actually no point in doing that. I'm going to change directory to uh, and I think if you use the title, it takes you back to your home directory, ls-l. Yep. And then I want to go cd space downloads. And I'm using the tab key. You type a couple of letters and press tab, and then it will give you some suggestions or auto-fill things in. ls-l. And there are the files that I actually want. So now to run this, you normally go dot forward slash install. And if I run it like this, I cannot install uh, things into the root directory. I need elevated privileges. So the way to do it is you go sudo, which I understand means super user do, dot forward slash um, install. Now, excuse the horrible gooby goosh on the screen because that's something to do with the font sets, but I'm not too worried about that at the moment. What I want to do is go up to install Mystic. And you can see by default it's actually trying to uh, save it into the created directory from the root directory. So if I go F2, because I've run it as super user, it's gone ahead and created the directory and installed the files. And that's fine. So we get out of there and it says go to the wiki to find out more or run a few commands, which are the same as the Windows commands, except you'll see it's got that dot forward slash in front of it to run local login and config. So for now, I now I want to go cd space forward slash and I'll type clear to clear the screen and then I will go ls-l to list everything out. And you'll see in there now that I do have a directory called Mystic but it is owned by uh, the user root and it's part of the uh, group root and I need to change that so that it, I can use it as the user pi because you see I'm logged in as pi at Raspberry Pi. So the way to do that is that you type in the words sudo, c-h-o-w-n, which is change ownership. You put in a big minus r, which means recursive. It's going to go back down through the directories you're specifying and change the ownership. Then you type in um, the user and the group, or is it the group and the user? I'm not sure. Pi, semicolon, pi. And then you go forward slash mystic. And if I run that, which, you know, in a blinding flash, it's done. Now if I go ls-l, and I'm just using the up keys on my keyboard, because you see it remembers all the stuff I've typed. It's really useful. ls-l this time, you'll see that in the Mystic directory, it's now changed so that the group and the ownership is pi, which is how it should be. If I go cd space, and I type the word mis mys and press tab, it goes mystic. So now I'm into the mystic directory, ls minus l. You can see again everything that's in there is owned by the user pi and a member of the group pi. This is what you need to start with and this is just a stock standard install for mystic where nothing else has been set up so far. If we go into the config side of things, so if I go dot forward slash mystic dash cfg it doesn't look terribly sexy right now and depending upon how you're accessing Mystic this is the tip that I'll show you how to change the view so things look nicer for you. 
So you see we've got the options along the top here. I'm just using the cursor keys to move. You go into configuration and you go into login matrix settings and then it's these two settings here. So local code page, the code page for local login for Linux and OSX systems. Now by default it's set to UTF-8 and the chances are it'll work for you and you won't need to do this. But if it looks ugly like this, then just change that code page to CP437. That's the options. It's one or the other. Escape out a few times and then when you rerun this, look at that. It's a thing of beauty. And now things look a lot nicer and easier to see. So again, it just depends on um, what you are doing to access this system. If you were to SSH into this, um, then the chances are then you'd probably want to run the code page as UTF-8. But I think this is to do with the fact that I'm using VNC and I'm, look, I don't know, but it's a mixture of that sort of stuff that's causing this. Um, now another thing before we get too stuck into setting things up, and to be honest I'm not sure how much I'm going to go into setting up the basic configurations, because if you are really interested in this, I've done all these videos for Windows, and there isn't a lot of difference between what you need to do for Raspberry Pi Linux versus Windows, but I do want to try and point out as part of a few videos that I'll do for the Pi what those differences are. So the first one I want to point out to you is in the system paths, just notice that unlike Windows, the, um, the pathing is a forward slash, not a backslash. So it's forward slash mystic, forward slash this, and so on. Um, that can catch you out, especially with the configuration files, which uh, I will ultimately probably create a, um, a version that you'll be able to download and just install if you wish. But uh, at the moment, you just be aware of those. Another thing that catches people out is that um, in the editors, under the archive editor, there is the ability to set the switches for um, compression, and zip is the one that we generally use. Now I know that in the past some of the versions of this software have shipped with quotation marks around this line here where it's got percentage one, percentage two. Those quotation marks seem to have been removed, but I, I've heard of reports where those re quotes did have to be removed in order for the zip side of things to work. Incidentally, I note that on this line, the percent three doesn't have quotes around it. I'm just wondering whether it should. So um, that aside, what I want you to do when you are watching this video is fire up a command prompt. So we'll do another one. And just double check that you've got those compression things installed. So if I go unzip, you can see that unzip is installed. It's given me a whole bunch of command prompts and whatnot. That's all cool. I go clear to clear the screen, and if I type zip, command not found. Now this is the one that catches people out because quite often, depending on whether this is a new version of um, operating system for you, and I'm assuming you're a complete newbie like me, and you've just set up your Raspberry Pi for the very first time, uh, zip's not even installed, so we actually need to get this, and if you don't have it, then what happens is it looks like Mystic is working, and you discover that actually it was because you didn't have zip. <laughs> so how do we do that? We go sudo space, um, what do we do, apt-get, then we type the word space install zip. So that's saying super user do and then it runs this apt-get thing and then the command is installing and then finally you're saying what you want to install which is zip. So what it does is it reads these package lists, it reads the state information, it recognizes that um, something will be installed, and here we go, you can see it's busy running through what it needs to, setting up zip. This may or may not take a little while, but there you go, it's finished now. So if I clear the screen, just to keep it tidy, and I type zip now, Look at that, I've got a whole bunch of switches and commands, and this is a good thing. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that Linux in general is case sensitive. So if you have a file that's called uh, fsxnet.zip, just to um, use this terminal, that file is completely different to fsxnet. .zip. The two cases are um, regarded as different. 
And that becomes an issue when you're talking about node lists and how we configure node lists uh, and how those are seen when the system is sucking them in. So my general tip is try and keep everything that you set up in your Mystic system lowercase and that makes life a lot easier when it comes to moving between versions. So say, uh, particularly between say operating systems, you want to migrate your Windows version across to a Mystic uh, Raspberry Pi version. If everything's lowercase in the way that you've created file names and it's consistently that, it's going to be much better. So I'll exit out of this and at this stage I'm just thinking what else do I need to desperately show you. Um, I'm not going to show you too much more just at the moment. I think what I'll do is I'll stop this video and I will start to set things up as per the Windows version so that you can see um, how, how the differences are. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that for now. So thank you for watching. I will be back with another video in due course. But I think this is just the nice starting point. And then have a look at your um, uh, Windows uh, video examples. And uh, we'll go from there. I might change my mind yet and still do another video setting up things from scratch, I think. So we'll see. But for now, we'll keep this one reasonably short. And uh, wish you a happy day. Bye for now.